Rome's navy touched the waves for the very first time in 260 BC. Gnaeus Cornelius Scipio took 17 warships into the Lipari Islands, being ambushed and defeated. But soon after, a scouting fleet of 50 Carthaginian ships met the entire Roman fleet and was crushed with relative ease. Emboldened by this victory, Gaius Dullius pushed through the seas of Sicily to meet the Carthaginian fleet in battle. By 260 BC, the war on the island of Sicily devolved into skirmishes and siege warfare. Neither side wanted to commit their troops in a pitched battle. Carthage would shadow the Roman armies and defend where possible, and Rome was essentially blockaded in Sicily, having very fragile reinforcements, supply and communication lines. It was thus imperative for both powers to control the seas around the island. The first ever Roman fleet was about to dispute these waters. After the Battle of the Lipari Islands, Gaius Dullius set sail looking to conquer the seas, and the Carthaginians had no choice but to meet Dullius in battle. The two fleets met off the coast of Mille in the Battle of Mille of 260 BC. Hannibal Gisco had 130 ships, and the historian John Lazenby calculates that Dullius had approximately the same number. The Carthaginians anticipated an easy victory due to the superior experience of their crews and their faster and more maneuverable galleys, and broke formation to close rapidly with the Romans. As the Carthaginian triremes and king triremes approached, the Romans prepared their newly adopted corvus to deploy. Unfortunately, Total War did not include this device on their games and it's not possible to represent it in action, but you can check the video on your screen right now for further details on the Corvus. The first 30 Carthaginian ships were struck by the Corvus and the Roman legions boarded with ease. Among these 30 ships was Hannibal Gisco's flagship. As the multiple engagements on multiple ships were happening at the front, the remaining Carthaginian fleet moved on the flanks in a pincer movement. The Romans predicted this, and with the help of the Corvus, they were able to stop and grapple most of the incoming ships. The battle was fought mostly on the decks of the Carthaginian ships, and there the Punic marines had little chance of victory. Hannibal Gisco had to flee on a small boat with some of his officers. The Romans were capturing ship by ship, and as more and more ships flew the Roman flag, the Carthaginian resolve was shattered along with their pride. 50 ships were captured by the Romans, and the capture of the Carthaginian flagship signaled all unengaged Punic triremes and King triremes to withdraw. The Mediterranean was now being disputed. With the Carthaginians now licking their wounds and rebuilding their fleet, the Romans would finally be able to deal with the raiders from Corsica and Sardinia that had been harassing the Italian coast since 262. The year after Mille, 259 BC, the consul Lucius Cornelius Scipio led part of the fleet against Alaria in Corsica and captured it. He then attacked Ulbia in Sardinia, but was repulsed, losing Alaria in the process. In 258 BC, a stronger Roman fleet engaged a smaller Carthaginian fleet at the Battle of Sulci, off the city of Sulci in western Sardinia, and inflicted a heavy defeat on the Punic side. The Carthaginian commander Hannibal Gisco once again abandoned these men and fled to the city of Sulci. He was later captured by his soldiers and crucified in disgrace. Despite this victory, the Romans, who were attempting to support simultaneous offensives against both Sardinia and Sicily, were unable to exploit it, and the attack on Carthaginian held Sardinia pettered out. In 257 BC, the Roman fleet happened to be anchored off Tindaris in northeast Sicily, when the Carthaginian fleet, unaware of its presence, sailed past in loose formation. The Roman commander Gaius Attilius Regulus ordered an immediate attack initiating the Battle of Tindaris. This led to the Roman fleet in turn putting to sea in a disordered manner. The Carthaginians responded rapidly, ramming and sinking nine of the leading ten Roman ships. As the main Roman force came into action, they responded by sinking eight Carthaginian ships and capturing ten other. The faster Carthaginian ships withdrew and fled without further losses. The Romans then raided both the Liparis and Malta. The situation in Sicily remained as a stalemate as both powers were now vying for control of the seas. Both nations were pouring their entire economies into building and manning their ever-expanding navies. After Milai, Sulci and Tindaris, the Romans were eager to bring the fight into Africa. By 256 BC, their fleet numbered over 300 warships and the necessary preparations were being made for the invasion. 
Carthage was well aware of the coming invasion and mustered all their 350 ships under Hanno the Great and Hamilcar. The Roman fleet had to be stopped. Both sides met off Cape Ignomus, a battle that would see nearly 700 warships and 300,000 people participate. This is to this day the largest naval battle ever fought. But who won this engagement? Stay tuned and hit that subscribe button to find out on the next episode. If you enjoyed this essay on the Punic Wars, I'd suggest one of the videos on your screen right now. Have a great day, stay wonderful, and we'll find out.